Chapter Six of the diverting and important scrutiny which the curate and the barber made in the library of our ingenious gentleman. He was still sleeping, so the curate asked the niece for the keys of the room where the books, the authors of all the mischief, were, and right willingly she gave them. They all went in, the housekeeper with them, and found more than a hundred volumes of big books very well bound, and some other small ones. The moment the housekeeper saw them, she turned about and ran out of the room, and came back immediately with a saucer of holy water and a sprinkler, saying, Here, your worship, Signor Licentiate, sprinkle this room. Don't leave any magician of the many there are in these books to bewitch us in revenge for our design of banishing them from the world. The simplicity of the housekeeper made the licentiate laugh, and he directed the barber to give him the books one by one to see what they were about, as there might be some to be found among them that did not deserve the penalty of fire. No, said the niece, there is no reason for showing mercy to any of them. They have every one of them done mischief. Better fling them out of the window into the court, and make a pile of them, and set fire to them, or else carry them into the yard, and there a bonfire can be made without the smoke giving any annoyance. The housekeeper said the same, so eager were they for the slaughter of those innocents. But the curate would not agree to it without first reading at any rate the titles. The first that Master Nicholas put into his hand was the four books of Amidis of Gaul. This seems a mysterious thing, said the curate for as i have heard said this was the first book of chivalry printed in spain and from this all the others derive their birth and origin so it seems to me that we ought inexorably to condemn it to the flames as the founder of so vile a sect nay sir said the barber i too have heard say that this is the best of all the books of this kind that have been written and so as something singular in its line it ought to be pardoned true said the curate and for that reason let its life be spared for the present. Let us see that other which is next to it. It is, said the barber, the Sergas de Esplandian, the lawful son of Amadis of Gaul. Then verily, said the curate, the merit of the father must not be put down to the account of the son. Take it, mistress housekeeper, open the window and fling it into the yard, and lay the foundation of the pile for the bonfire we are to make. The housekeeper obeyed with great satisfaction, and the worthy Esplandian went flying into the yard to await with all patience the fire that was in store for him. Proceed, said the curate. This that comes next, said the barber, is Amadis of Greece, and, indeed, I believe all those on this side are of the same Amadis lineage. Then to the yard with the whole of them, said the curate, for to have the burning of Queen Pintiquiniestra and the shepherd Darinel in his eclogues and the bedeviled and involved discourses of his author i would burn with them the father who begot me if he were going about in the guise of a knight-errant i am of the same mind said the barber and so am i added the niece in that case said the housekeeper here into the yard with them they were handed to her and as there were many of them she spared herself the staircase and flung them down out of the window who is that tub there said the curate this said the barber is don olivante de lora the author of that book said the curate was the same that wrote the garden of flowers and truly there is no deciding which of the two books is the more truthful or to put it better the less lying all i can say is send this one into the yard for a swaggering fool this that follows is flores marte of hircania said the barber senor flores marte here said the curate then by my faith he must take up his quarters in the yard in spite of his marvellous birth and visionary adventures for the stiffness and dryness of his style deserve nothing else into the yard with him and the other mistress housekeeper with all my heart senor said she and executed the order with great delight this said the barber is the knight platier an old book that said the curate but i find no reason for clemency in it send it after the others without appeal which was done another book was opened and they saw it was entitled the knight of the cross for the sake of the holy name this book has said the curate its ignorance might be excused but then they say behind the cross there is the devil to the fire with it taking down another book the barber said this is the mirror of chivalry i know his worship said the curate that is where Signor Reinaldos of Montalvan figures with his friends and comrades, greater thieves than Cacus, 
and the twelve peers of france with the voracious historian turpin however i am not for condemning them to more than perpetual banishment because at any rate they have some share in the invention of the famous matteo boiardo whence to the christian poet ludovico ariosto wove his web to whom if i find him here and speaking any language but his own i shall show no respect whatever but if he speaks his own tongue i will put him upon my head well i have him in italian said the barber but i do not understand him nor would it be well that you should understand him said the curate and on that score we might have excused the captain if he had not brought him into spain and turned him into castilian he robbed him of a great deal of his natural force and so do all those who try to turn books written in verse into another language for with all the pains they take and all the cleverness they show they never can reach the level of the originals as they were first produced in short i say that this book and all that may be found treating of those french affairs should be thrown into or deposited in some dry well until after more consideration it is settled what is to be done with them excepting always one bernardo de carpio that is going about another called roncevales for these if they come into my hands shall pass into those of the housekeeper and from hers into the fire without any reprieve to all this the barber gave his assent and looked upon it as right and proper being persuaded that the curate was so staunch to the faith and loyal to the truth that he would not for the world say anything opposed to them opening another book he saw it was palmerin de oliva and beside it was another called palmerin of england seeing which the licentiate said let the olive be made firewood of at once and burned until no ashes even are left and let that palm of england be kept and preserved as a thing that stands alone and let such another case be made for it as that which alexander found among the spoils of darius and set aside for the safe keeping of the words of the poet homer this book gossip is of authority for two reasons first because it is very good and secondly because it is said to have been written by a wise and witty king of portugal all the adventures at the castle of miragarda are excellent and of admirable contrivance and the language is polished and clear studying and observing the style befitting the speaker with propriety and judgment so then provided it seems good to you master nicholas i say let this and amadis of gaul be remitted the penalty of fire and as for all the rest let them perish without further question or query nay gossip said the barber for this that i have here is the famous don belianis well said the curate that and the second third and fourth parts all stand in need of a little rhubarb to purge their excess of bile and they must be cleared of all that stuff about the castle of fame and other great affectations to which end let them be allowed the overseas term and according as they mend so shall mercy or justice be meted out to them and in the meantime gossip do you keep them in your house and let no one read them with all my heart said the barber and not caring to tire himself with reading more books of chivalry he told the housekeeper to take all the big ones and throw them into the yard it was not said to one dull or deaf but to one who enjoyed burning them more than weaving the broadest and finest web that could be and seizing about eight at a time she flung them out of the window in carrying so many together she let one fall at the feet of the barber who took it up curious to know whose it was and found it said history of the famous knight tirante el blanco god bless me said the curate with a shout tirante el blanco here hand it over gossip for in it i reckon i have found a treasury of enjoyment and a mine of recreation here is don kirilaisen of montalvan a valiant knight and his brother tomas of montalvan and the knight fonseca with the battle the bold tirante fought with the mastiff and the witticisms of the damsel placer de mevida and the loves and wiles of the widow reposada and the empress in love with the squire hippolito in truth gossip by right of its style it is the best book in the world here knights eat and sleep and die in their beds and make their wills before dying and a great deal more of which there is nothing in all the other books nevertheless i say he who wrote it for deliberately composing such fooleries deserves to be sent to the galleys for life take it home with you and read it and you will see that what i have said is true as you will said the barber but what are we to do with these little books that are left these must be not chivalry but poetry said the curate 
and opening one he saw it was the diana of jorge de montemayor and supposing all the others to be of the same sort these he said do not deserve to be burned like the others for they neither do nor can do the mischief the books of chivalry have done being books of entertainment that can hurt no one ah senor said the niece your worship had better order these to be burned as well as the others for it would be no wonder if after being cured of his chivalry disorder my uncle by reading these took a fancy to turn shepherd and range the woods and fields singing and piping or what would be still worse to turn poet which they say is an incurable and infectious malady the damsel is right said the curate and it will be well to put this stumbling block and temptation out of our friend's way to begin then with the diana of montemayor i am of opinion it should not be burned but that it should be cleared of all that about the sage felicia and the magic water and of almost all the longer pieces of verse let it keep and welcome its prose and the honour of being the first of books of the kind this that comes next said the barber is the diana entitled the second part by the salamancan and this other has the same title and its author is gilpolo as for that of the salamancan replied the curate let it go to swell the number of the condemned in the yard and let gilpolo's be preserved as if it came from apollo himself but get on gossip and make haste for it is growing late this book said the barber opening another is the ten books of the fortune of love written by antonio de la Frasso, a sardinian poet by the orders i have received said the curate since apollo has been apollo and the muses have been muses and poets have been poets so droll and absurd a book as this has never been written and in its way it is the best and the most singular of all of this species that have as yet appeared and he who has not read it may be sure he has never read what is delightful give it here gossip for i make more account of having found it than if they had given me a cassock of florence stuff he put it aside with extreme satisfaction and the barber went on these that come next are the shepherd of iberia the nymphs of enares and the enlightenment of jealousy then all we have to do said the curate is to hand them over to the secular arm of the housekeeper and ask me not why or we shall never have done this next is the pastor de felida no pastor that said the curate but a highly polished courtier let it be preserved as a precious jewel this large one here said the barber is called the treasury of various poems if there were not so many of them said the curate they would be more relished this book must be weeded and cleansed of certain vulgarities which it has with its excellences let it be preserved because the author is a friend of mine and out of respect for other more heroic and loftier works that he has written this continued the barber is the cancionero of lopez de montenado the author of that book too said the curate is a great friend of mine and his verses from his own mouth are the admiration of all who hear them for such is the sweetness of his voice that he enchants when he chants them it gives rather too much of its eclogues but what is good was never yet plentiful let it be kept with those that have been set apart but what book is that next to it the galatea of miguel de cervantes said the barber that cervantes has been for many years a great friend of mine and to my knowledge he has had more experience in reverses than in verses his book has some good invention in it it presents us with something but brings nothing to a conclusion we must wait for the second part it promises perhaps with amendment it may succeed in winning the full measure of grace that is now denied it and in the meantime do you send your gossip keep it shut up in your own quarters very good said the barber and here come three together the aracana of don alonso de arela the austriada of juan rufo justice of cordova and the montserrata of cristobal de verruez the valencian poet these three books said the curate are the best that have been written in castilian in heroic verse and they may compare with the most famous in italy let them be preserved as the richest treasures of poetry that spain possesses the curate was tired and would not look into any more books and so he decided that contents uncertified all the rest should be burned but just then the barber held open one called the tears of angelica i should have shed tears myself said the curate when he heard the title had i ordered that book to be burned 
for its author was one of the famous poets of the world not to say of spain and was very happy in the translation of some of ovid's fables